Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We continue our examination of 1 John, the letter that John wrote to a group of believers. Uh, we're in the third chapter, and I want us to go back. We've looked up through ch- uh, verse 10. I want us to read 6 and 10 again, again, to set the context of what he's saying to us about that we need to abide in him. If you're abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you will not sin. If someone says that they are abiding in him and yet they sin continually and that's their practice, then they are liars. The one who practices sin is a liar if he professes to be born of God. So listen to this, verse 6. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has seen him or knows him. Little children, make sure no one deceives you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who practices sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. No one who is born of God practices sin because his seed abides in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. So he starts driving home this point, which he'd picked up a little bit before, of loving the brother, of loving the brother. Well, you know, who's our brother? Remember, there was a guy that asked Jesus at one time, <laughs> you know. And uh, obviously, it's those that are true believers, those that are uh, of the body of Christ. They are our brother in spirit because we have a common faith, we have a common belief, and we have a common Lord that dwells within us. <clears throat> But also of mankind, humankind are our brothers. We must love all. Okay, we love. We're going to love those of the body in a different way because of that commonality, because of the oneness of the spirit. But listen to this: the next two verses are really important. We're going to look at these probably the next two or three episodes. For this is the message which you have heard from the beginning. Notice how he keeps driving home this beginning. A while ago. He said that the devil had sinned from the beginning. Well, when did that occur? <laughs> yeah, well, that takes you somewhere back to Genesis, right? And then right here it says, This is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. So the message that they had heard was what? That they were to love one another. And they had heard that from the beginning. From the beginning of what? <laughs> You know, from the beginning when, you know. And so, you know, you go back and say, what well, could be here? It's when they had encountered the Lord Jesus Christ. What had they um, received from him continually? Yeah, love. They had received love and they saw it manifested in him. When he gets to the end of his life, uh, the Lord started giving them commandments, started giving them instructions. They had been with him some three, three and a half years. But listen what he said. Uh, John 13 talks about this. Let me, I'll, I'll begin with verse 31. So this is Jesus speaking. Therefore, when he'd gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him immediately. So he's given us insight into the relationship between Father and Son and the wondrous mystery of the Godhead and the triune nature of God. Verse 33, little children. Again, this is the same John that wrote the letter John. This is the Apostle John writing this gospel. Little children, Jesus said, I am with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as as I said to the Jews, now I also say to you, Where I'm going, you cannot come. Now listen to these next two verses. Jesus speaking, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And I've spoken on this many, many times, but I think it bears repeating. This is the new commandment that Jesus gave them. Okay, a new commandment. 
he was about to go somewhere else. He was about to die, and he'd been telling them that. And he says, where I'm going right now, you cannot come. But I'm giving you a new commandment, and this new commandment is that you love one another. Why? Because the world will know that you're my disciples if you have love for one another. And the church is so distracted on this because we pervert this love at two extremes of a pendulum, okay? Uh, we One end of the, a pendulum is that uh, if you don't agree theologically and scripturally with everything I agree exactly the way I do, then you're not truly of the faith, and there's no love there. The other extreme is regardless of what somebody does and what, regardless of what they say, that we have to love everybody, so we just sort of have to endure it and put up with it. Well, that's wrong too. It's just a, a foolishness when you look at what the balance of Scripture says. We love while we speak forth the truth. Okay? We love while we speak forth forth the truth and jesus is saying this it's not going to be by your perfection of theology it's not going to be by your propagation of the faith okay it's not going to be by your love of god which is great okay you want that okay it's not going to be by that it's not going to be by the great things that you do for me it's not going to be by your a great understanding of the word a great understanding of even the spirit it's not going to be in our day and age uh it's not going to be by your great buildings your great programs, your great worship service, your great ministerial staff. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to be by any of these things and, and then an abundance of other things that might come to mind that the world will know that you're my disciples. It's going to be by your love for one another. Now think about that for a moment. What is being reflected to the world in light of that? John says in 1 John, this is a message you've heard from the beginning that we should love one another. If, our, if it is by our love for one another that the world will know that we are disciples, it's the world that will know this, okay? Not those in the church. The world will know this. Then what does the world know about us? The world knows exactly what they say. They profess that many, a lot of people say most, People who profess to be of the faith are hypocrites. Are hypocrites. Why do they say that? Because of the lack of love that they see within the body for one another. Again, let me read this verse 11. Then I'm going to read verse 12 and we'll have to pick it up next time. For this is the message which you've heard from, from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the evil one and slew his brother, and for what reason did he slay him? Because his deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. Whoa. There are some serious things right there that we'll consider uh, in the next episode. We'll actually go to Genesis and uh, read that account right there. But he's given us an example of what he is talking about. And he's driving home this thing. Folks, we must be righteous before God. If you abide in him, if you truly believe then you will practice righteousness. If you don't practice righteousness and your practice is that of sin, then you are not of God. You are of the devil. I don't care how much God language you use. Uh, we see it today in a lot of denominational things. Several denominations are going through things where people are standing up and just proclaiming overt sins, things that the Scripture just calls abhorrent before God, proclaiming those to be righteous acts because God made them that way and God told me that this is all right and I am not sinning. And they're practicing these very sins. Jesus says right here, if you practice what he calls sin, then you are of the devil. And he says this, the Son of God appeared for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. The Lord will destroy that work in your life. He will take you and he will reform you. He will change you. <laughs> He'll do marvelous things. You see this in 1 Corinthians 6. He can do this. But know this, if you reject it, then he won't. Well, anyway, my time's up. We'll continue this conversation next time. Again, I'm Dale. I'll see you then. Goodbye.